Tonight, more than 130 breeds from around the world arrive here in Long Beach, California to face off in the most demanding agility event of the year. I have to say I built my entire year around this weekend. It takes a lot to compete at this level. We're here to win. All battle to be number one. Standing in their way, the toughest field of canine competition ever. Prestigious agility event. In the final round, it's all about fast and clean. We could see a major upset here tonight. It's time to lay it on the line and go for broke. The AKC Agility Invitational Championship is next. From Long Beach, California, this is the American Kennel Club's Agility Invitational Championship. Welcome to the final round of the AKC's Agility Invitational Championship. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Goen, and nearly 800,000 dogs have faced off over the past 12 months for the privilege of being here tonight. And now it all comes down to this, the biggest agility event of the year, with the best dogs about to be unleashed to vie for the titles of Invitational Champion. And joining me is our resident expert and 15-year veteran in this sport, Terry Simons. Terry, sum up the night for me. In a single word, Bob, excitement. Like any world-class sporting event that combines speed and precision, there's always one moment where competitors have to put it all on the line, and this is it. At the start of the competition, there were 470 dogs. They were separated into five height divisions, determined by the distance between the dog's shoulder and paw. All the dogs ran four separate courses. The teams with the best accuracy and speed advanced to the finals. Tonight, the 57 top dogs will compete for the honor of being called an AKC Agility Invitational Champion. Now let's take a look at the top dogs to watch. Seated number one is Cosmo, a toy poodle and handler Tom Jones. Tom is very confident going into tonight's final. He's a super dog. All I have to do with him is look at the course map, find a smart plan, and he'll do it. He's a very reliable dog. So let's get to the action. First up we have Cadeau, a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and handler Wayne Simon. You can see Cadeau just staring at Wayne, that big, long lead out. I could even wonder if Cadeau could even see over the bars it was such a long lead out. When you say lead out, what do you mean? It's real simple. You leave your dog at the start line and you find a place on course where you can find an advantage to handle and you release your dog. Gotcha. Now, this dog is nine years old, but has only been competing for a little over two years. Why is that? Well, they probably got involved in the sport later in life trying to figure out something to do, and they might have seen it and went, oh, my dog can do that. Kind of the same way I got involved. My wife took our dog, said she can do that, and that was it. That's how we got started. <laughs> Not bad for this dog, that's for sure. Cadeau with a time of 38.28 seconds. Bill in the hot seat, and now here comes a very anxious Rocky, a miniature schnauzer with Steve Moon. Yeah, Steve likes to hold on to Rocky and literally drop and go. He asks for a little bit more speed that way, and I think he gets it, because sometimes, you know, movement begets movement, and look at him move, and yeah. look at Rocky move. Yeah, you could really see that Rocky was champing at the bit, couldn't wait to get started. Oh, no, and it was like, drop and go, it was <laughs> great. Well, they've got a tough time of Cadeau to beat, and I tell you, it looks like they're on the way to doing it. Absolutely. I mean, this is great. Little hesitation there, too, but I think the ground speed's going to make it up. Oh, my gosh. Look at that as they take over first place, 35.28, three full seconds faster. Now to the line is April, a Pomeranian, and Gail Donaldson. And Gail tells us what it's like being April's handler. Working with April is incredible. We are really a very tight team. She reads me well, and sometimes she likes to push me. She feels the energy, and she lights up, and it's absolutely amazing to go out there and be able to run with her and really feel like a team. Oh, and trust me, it does feel great when your dog lights up and you feel like you have the whole world in your hands. <laughs> and it sure looks like they do, wow. too. Wow. April really flying and taking over first place. 33.22 seconds. A really strong run, Terry. 
And coming up, can the Pomeranian hold on to the lead? Or will the Louchin or maybe the Toy Poodle spoil April's run for handler Kelly Misigatis? And Kelly tells us why Hoosier has what it takes. Boston Terriers are great for agility because they love to work with people. Um, they're very what we call biddable, meaning it's what can I do for you? They're not as independent as some of the other breeds. Uh, they love to play. If you make it a game, they will do anything you ask. Well, agility is nothing but a game, so I'm guessing Hoosier's really going to give everything he can on this. It's a game for the dogs. <laughs> Hardly for the handlers, though, right? You know, it's a big game for the handlers, too. It's just one big game for both. Well, not a bad time, but not enough to take over first place, so it looks like Gale and April will remain in the hot seat. And next up is Leo, a papillon with handler Lindsay Mulligan. This is the number two seed, Terry. And Lindsay Mulligan is a very young woman for the sport, right? She is young, but she's been in the sport 10 years. Interesting move there, crossing down there at the bottom of the chute. That can be a little dangerous, but they pulled it off nicely. Rear crossing the landing side of that teeter. Look at the little papillon go. Wow, those ears really make him look like he's flying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Papillon came from Butterfly, so right. that's what those ears are. Nice into the tunnel there. Trying to beat a time of 33-22. It's going to be close. Front crossing the teeter. Long time on that teeter, though. Yep, and that cost him. That will be a second place time for Leo and Lindsay, and that means the final run for the 12-inch height class is here. The championship on the line, this is the number one seed, Cosmo, a toy poodle with handler Tom Jones. Tom takes a nice long lead out, front crosses that shoot, looking for speed here. I expected him to do another front cross there to actually help drive the dog even more. He ended up rear crossing that tire, that's going to cost him some time, that little hesitation there. Okay, great, now he's back to front crossing, driving his dog, staying ahead of his dog, driving his dog from ahead, that's great work. Tom looks really under control with his dog. And Gail looking on, come on, bite your nails here, Gail. <laughs> this is nerve wracking. A little hesitation. Oh, that's just too much. This is not gonna be a fast enough time. Gail Donaldson and April are going to win the 12 inch height class. Wow, what a victory. Congratulations. Terry, let's see how they beat second place finishers, Lindsey Mulligan and Leo. Coming out of the shoot, the teams were even, but April makes a tighter turn to take the early lead. But going through the weaves, Leo catches and passes April. By the teeter, they are neck and neck again, but April is able to bring the teeter down faster, and that was the difference. <laughs> there go Gail and April on their victory run in the closest divisional race so far. Let's check the final results. Just over a second and a half separating the top four finishers. April takes first, Leo is next by just over a second, and in a flash, Hoosier comes in third, Cosmo rallies for fourth. Now let's go ringside where Terry's standing by with Gail and April. Gail, you've been here three times before, third time's a charm. What did you do to elevate your game? You know what? I stuck to the plan, I run the way I always do, and I put faith in my dog. Well, that seemed to have done the trick. Congratulations. He will not forget. Gail Donaldson and her Pomeranian April upset the top three seeds to win the 12-inch class by 1.1 second, and the closest race of the night belonged to top-seeded Gordon Simmons-Moke and his German Shepherd.